Can you just tell? No, I just want to get a fee. A third year, fourth year, second year. Second year. All of you. Second year. Yes, sir. Fourth semester. Fourth semester. Yes, sir. Fourth semester. Probability statistics. Uh, so you have a course on probability statistics, right? Exactly. And then uh, you also have a course on biostatistics in the sixth or seventh semester. No. Yes or no? Actually, we have uh, only probability and statistics. Biostatistics is uh, something new. We deal with uh, biotechnological terminologies, where in uh, probability statistics we deal with uh, some mechanical objects like that. Okay. Okay. Mathematics. Do you have a course on biostatistics in your uh, curriculum? No, sir. No biostatistics. Okay. Okay. Then uh, this uh, this will actually give you a nice overview of everything, right? The um, statistical sure. principles, test of significance, then design of experiments. Normally, the design of experiments is not taught anywhere, so that will be very new for you. I, none of the courses teach, but uh, many courses will teach you ANOVA and T tests and things like that. Actually, um, one uh, one thing I want to ask is: Does the um, mathematics become very difficult as you go along? You see a lot of equations, formulae. Do you feel it very difficult? No, sir. It's not actually so difficult comparing to the other uh, other semester max papers. Okay, so it was not difficult. Um, okay. Uh, another one. Another point is that most nowadays a lot of softwares are available which can do the statistics, but uh, you will not uh, know what is happening behind that. So uh, softwares will give you a lot of uh, uh, data results. But uh, now, if you follow this course, then you will be able to understand how it is doing that, and you'll also understand uh, um, what are the significance of some of those terms. I'm sure there must be some softwares in your college also, like uh, MATLAB, SPSS. Yes, sir. We are uh, studying. Uh, there must MATLAB. Be MATLAB. We are doing. Uh, MATLAB does not have much statistics. SPSS or MINITAB. SPSS. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. it's. Uh, Next terminal, we are having those uh, syllabus sir, for next terminal test. Okay, so uh, SPSS can do all these uh, very fast. You just put in the data, it will give you a lot of uh, statistical analysis. But um, now, if you go through the course, it will give you, you will get an idea of what, the, how to calculate all those things. So that's the uh, main thing about uh, this course. And uh, SPSS does not talk about design of experiments. I, I don't think. Um, SPSS has much of design of experiments, so that's also very new for for you people which you learn from this course. So, anything specific you want to ask? You want to ask about the exam, or you want to ask something specific? Anybody has? Uh, generally, regarding exam, uh, would you provide us a spreadsheet for uh, calculating the problems? Uh, okay, exam. Um, I will. Uh, we will provide all the tables. F test, F table. P table, Z table, um, all the sign test tables. Um, so all the tables will be there, chi-square table. But uh, calculations, you have to do it by calculator only. And uh, problems will not be very big. That means uh, you will not. I will not. I'm not asking very big uh, data problems. It will be small data problems. So it's not difficult to do. Like uh, ANOVA, there will be a problem. Means it will not have too many. Data points, you know, calculating the total sum of squares and all. If you have too many data points, it may take more time, but it will have less number of data points. Okay, so there will be problems on ANOVA, there will be problems on sign test, uh, something on binomial, something on um, the, uh, uh, the Poisson distribution, and uh, like that, you know, t test, two sample t test, and then uh, the, uh, the, the Pair T test, so like that. And if you have done all the assignments, I think problems are almost like assignments. Right? There's no difference. There's nothing difficult. So you should be able to do the uh, exam much easier, much much easier um, when compared to your uh, quizzes. You know, problems will be exactly same, similar type.
So tell me why you people wanted to attend this course because I am sure you have so many classes to do. You have some six or seven papers, right? Theory papers, two labs. So did you all find time to do this? You had to do five videos, exam. So why do you people wanted to do this? It's a lot of work, right? Any particular reason? I I can't hear you. I I don't get the sound. Hello, Chesa City. Could you hear me, sir? Yes. Ah, now I can. Ah, now I can hear you. Uh, yes, my sir. question was, um, you you already have some uh, seven, six or seven theory papers, and then two labs. So there must be a lot of work for you. How why you wanted to do this course also? Because this course also has uh, five uh, videos and then one final exam. So it's a lot of work, isn't it? Do you find time? Did you find time to do this? Actually, we don't find uh, more time in uh, doing this course, but we would uh, go through these uh, videos by last three days and we would complete the assignment by time, sir. And uh, actually, we would get an extra credit and uh, we are doing our mini projects in our. Uh, uh this current semester so it would be helpful in uh, publishing paper something uh, we could go with some statistical ideas oh, so we we opt for this sir oh that's a good idea yeah because uh, nowadays if you are doing research in biology or biotechnology you have to do some statistical analysis without that uh, journals will not accept any uh, papers so that means you have to do some p test you have to do some anova um and that is very very important other one is if you are doing any say fermentation and you have to plan experiments um, i want to change temperature i want to change ph uh, you cannot blindly do those experiments if you follow a design you know, like a factorial design or a fraction factorial then uh, or a ccd like you know um, central composite research then it is easy to publish in journals also instead of blindly doing some experiments of changing temperature ph or carbon if you do a factorial then um, publication also becomes easier for you and all journals want some statistical analysis you have to do two sample features yes, you have to do anova you know that journals don't they you have to give a p value so journals don't accept uh, without any of this data analysis that's very important so that way it becomes easy yes Okay, but uh, till now till now uh, we don't have some uh, sort of clear ideas regarding uh, design of experiments we were okay with biostatistics sir um, have you done seven and uh, eight weeks okay sir i i just have seen only six uh, up to sixth week i have seen videos okay oh, sir okay. i will seven do it. Ah, right those give you all the does the last 10 classes all about doe only design of experiments it is okay, talking sir. about factorial design uh, fractional factorial design not about others Have they on seen seven and eight weeks? Yes, other people. Okay, sir. I will uh, hand over it to my friends. They would have some. Yeah. Have they done DOE? Hi, sir. Hello. Hi. Tell me your name first. Uh, my name is Robin. Okay. Sir, I have a small doubt in a uh, in P P test. Before that, have you all seen the seventh and eighth week, the design of experiment? No, sir. Has anybody, has anybody seen seventh no, and eighth week? No, sir. Nobody has seen. No, sir. So, oh, but uh, you need to do that also. When will you do? Sir, uh, in upcoming week we will finish the before exam. Yeah, when is the exam? Before exam we will come. Okay. When is the exam? You people are taking? The twenty March twenty. Master. So, because the last two weeks, lot of these DOEs are there. Design of experiment. Last ten classes. I do things like fractional factor, uh, factorial design, fractional factorial design, plaquette Berman design, and then um, box Wilkin Wilkinson design, box Benham design. All these are designs which we do in the last ten classes. So you need to see that. Ah, okay. Now, what's your question? Sir, in a, in regarding the tea test. while we calculating the value of t uh, some values be, uh, will be negative sir yeah. uh, but uh, 
negative value means it will be mostly less than the value of a table we calculate from table. Uh, whether we can take it as a minus value or we have to take modulus for the t value calculator. Yeah, uh, you have to take the modulus value because uh, um, you are a t distribution is a symmetric, right? Whatever is there on the left hand side is same as the right hand side. So you take the modulus and then uh, you can read out the p value from that. So it's okay. Okay? But, uh, I think you have not mentioned in that uh, video, so I have somewhat confusion in that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you take the modulus and then uh, take the t, uh, p value, take the t from the table and then measure the p value. Because uh, if you look at normal distribution, if you look at t distribution, they are symmetric. Whatever is there on the right hand side is same as the left hand side, right? So we, we take the uh, modulus. Thanks. Regarding that uh, box plot, box is uh, whisker plot. Okay. Regarding the, my name is Kishore, sir. Uh, Kishore, uh, regarding that uh, box whisker plot, is there any limitations for number of samples that we should uh, consider, or it's just a simple graphical uh, representation for uh, n number of uh, plot samples? It is a very nice way of looking at it visually. You know, anybody can see the visual and see how different the data is, right? So it is meant for visual observation. You can't, don't, there is no numerical in that. So you can take even four points, five points is okay. Um, but it gives a nice visual observation. One data set is very high, one data set is very low. And if there are any outliers, there will be star given. So you know, very outliers are there. And also the range, you can, it gives you a range also. So it's just a visual observation. So four, five data yes, points sir. are okay. Regarding variable distribution, uh, the reliability will be, will be decreasing with uh, increasing of uh, shape that is beta. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is there, uh, if uh, the time is not given, uh, we should, uh, we, sh we can uh, calculate the reliability using beta and eta itself or uh, time is essential or uh, something else? No, no, not necessarily. With beta and eta itself we can calculate. Okay, beta and eta itself we can calculate. There was one nice problem you saw, right? There is a nice biomaterial problem. You yes, saw sir. that? Right? that yes, sir. The the design A and B. Yes. So that's a very nice problem. If you understand that problem, it gives you how important variable distribution is, especially with respect to reliability of uh, uh, machine parts, reliability of uh, any item which you are looking at. Even two bulbs, the reliability of two bi light bulbs, you can study using this variable type of distribution. Okay? And uh, one more question uh, regarding non-parametric tests. Uh, you have asked what are the other non-parametric tests, and the uh, given options are uh, ranked test. Um, actually, sign test, Wilcoxon sign rank test, Kruskal Valley's test, and students range. Oh. Huh. What did he write it as? I can't hear you. The first. The first two tests are uh, same. Actually, they are derivatives for uh, dependent uh, dependent samples, yeah. and uh, the second one, Kruskal Valley's test, is for k independent samples, yeah. and uh, the right. students range test. I have doubt with students range test whether it is a non-parametric or parametric. Student Actually, it's a parametric. Correct. Student range test is a parametric test. Parametric test. So the, what is the right answer for that question? Uh, the sign test. If you see the first slide, you know, I give a comparison of uh, um, parametric tests and the corresponding uh, non-parametric tests. That slide is very, very useful. Look at that slide. You remember the one slide? Yes, sir. The yes, sir. I referred that. Um, yeah. Uh, for equivalent to ANOVA, equivalent to um, pair test and equivalent to two sample t tests. Use that uh, table. Okay? For that, sir, that only I asked. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hi, sir. Hi. I'm Priya. Mm -hmm. I have doubt. Why we consider the small sample as a value less than 30? Uh, mm -hmm. No, actually, um, the, uh, you saw the T table, no? It keeps on um, changing, it keeps on uh, decreasing, and finally it comes to 
for uh, say 95 percent it comes to 1.96 right so slowly that number keeps uh, decreasing decreasing have you seen the t table and uh, uh, seen how uh, the 95 percent decreases as you increase the number of degrees of freedom so it keeps coming down to 1.96 and 1.96 is the final value as such for a 95 percent uh, um, confidence okay that is why 30 is the best so but actually 30 experiments is too much so even if you look at the t table have a look at the t table and then around seven eight experiments now initially t value is very high right and the d degrees of freedom is low okay the t value is very high when df is very low as you keep increasing the degrees of freedom the t value keeps coming down correct so at six seven eight it keeps coming down 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 finally at 30 and um, around that place it's almost same 1.96 1.97 like that so ideally you should do 30 experiment but around six seven itself is, is coming down quite a lot so that is why everybody does the seven experiments or six experiment as the uh, standard so six degrees of freedom is good uh, approximation because uh, if you see uh, for a 95 percent confident uh, listen for a 95 percent confident you have five percent on both sides right five percent is okay for so that 1.96 is what is coming okay Hi sir, I am Balu. Sir, in non-parametric tests for uh, homogeneity of uh, variance, uh, we use three methods, sir. Uh, of, of the three methods, uh, which is the most feasible method, sir? Box will uh, with that box plot. Box box with that plot. If you can plot, you can quickly see how it looks like. Okay, that gives you an idea how far the variances are between. That's a pictorial representation. If you want a mathematical way, the second method is good. We will assume it as a normal distribution <clears throat> and then we can carry out a chi-square test. Understood, no? So we will assume that they... Uh, so what you do is, suppose I give 10 data points, I will calculate sigma and um, mu for that, assuming it as a normal distribution. And then I can compare with the data using a expected minus observed square divided by chi-square test. Then I can check for the chi-square idea. So that is, most of the softwares use that method. You understand what I'm telling? You can hear me? Do you hear me? Hello? Hello? KSR City. KSR City, please respond. Yeah. No, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Speaking to the other student. Please hand over the mic okay. to him. No, no, not, the, not that one. Not the other student. Just a while ago, he asked a question. Uh, please respond to Please respond to that. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So what you yes, have sir, to do is, uh, so you, if suppose I give 10 data points, I will assume it is normal and calculate um, the standard deviation and the mean. And then um, I will find out that is the expected. Whereas observed is the data that is given. So I do a chi-square test and I see whether chi-square is statistically significant or not. So that is the normal method used in many songs. But box the whisker plot is easy to see. We can, uh, uh, it looks, immediately we can tell how good the data looks like, how bad the data looks like and all that. Okay? Okay, sir. Understand, sir. Uh, actually, we are uh, doing uh, projects with uh, plants, uh, the phytochemi phytochemical analysis of plants, we are doing uh, many projects, sir. Uh, we have chosen uh, three, dif three plants and uh, three, more ex three different extraction methods for uh, phytochemical analysis. And uh, I, have to, I have to represent some statistic statistical analysis uh, regarding the um, efficiency, efficiency in extraction extraction okay. which which uh, solvent is giving more yield and uh, and regarding some particular compounds uh, for example say tannins if i am selecting tannin as my particular compound which i should get from that plant okay. uh, i i will get three different every plant will be giving uh, tannin uh, in the phytochemical test sir and uh, every plant will be giving different type, different sort of extractions for different sort of solvents yeah. how should i represent this in a simple statistical manner 
okay. it is going some complex uh, complex things uh, how, how should i uh, do it in a simple manner to explain to the viewers or the readers okay. so you have three uh, three plans and uh, three different uh, extraction procedures right uh, so if you for each plant if you take it will become 3 into 3 nine experiments but you have to repeat also because uh, without repeating error will not be there so you have to repeat each time each experiment once more so that means i take again the plant again i have to extract right now so you repeat uh, what is your plan you are going to do it twice right repeat it actually jatropha uh, jatropha um, carcass um, brahmi centella asiatica and uh, tectona grandis t they are using uh, these three plants and three different solvents pardon sir three different solvents you are using right solvents uh, we are using water acetone and okay what yes sir it is audio is breaking uh, can can the technical group help please we are using water acetone and benzene as three solvents and uh, and one more complexity is arising when i am doing with antimicrobial test for four more bacteria using these three samples okay okay uh, so uh, some sort of complexity is going on and i can't uh, uh, make it in a simple manner to uh, make it understand to my friends or a uh, uh, guide so i need some uh, mathematical assistance for uh, doing it in a very neat manner or simple have you Have you gone through the design of experiments, the seventh week and the eighth week? Sir, till now I haven't seen uh, those. You should see that no, there. In fact, uh, these type of problems can be addressed in that design of experiments. What you do is you read all the seventh and eighth week, and then you send me an email. Then uh, you will be better, Mr. Because uh, I want to do three different plants, three different extraction procedures, and four different bacteria. I am looking at right. so uh, how do i plan my experiment so in fact design of experiments exactly talks like that you go through the both the 7th uh, and 8th module then you send an email then when okay, i reply it becomes easy because uh, so basically you are doing 3 into 3 nine experiments right that means you take each plant you will extract with each solvent you take the second plant extract yeah. with each solvent. so you will get some results but you have to repeat also because we need some error so each time we have to do it once more once more so that means uh, maybe three times repeat so we'll do about 27 experiments so from there uh, we can uh, we can do anything we can use a two way anova simple right we have three plants three solvent two way sir, anova three plants three plants three solvent yes sir so we so could we go with anova two way anova um, uh, you have to repeat two times or three times okay so we can do two way anova then look at the error bar and and then we can think whether there is an interaction so we can have a main effect for plant main effect for solvent whether there is an interaction also we can see if you wanted to study interaction we need to repeat the experiment i talk talk right at least two times okay, we have to sir. do so we can do a two way anova simple okay so we need to do understood no okay sir okay. yes sir yeah. so you you do it um, later on and then you can send me the results i can say whether it looks good or is there any problem i can comment on that also no problem okay because okay. Uh, you do the experiments you do the anova collect the data do the anova you send me the excel you give me your conclusion i can comment on it later that may take okay. months, right? thank you sir that will take about 3 months maybe sir uh, actually uh, i have completed the project sir ah, okay okay Did you do a replication? Hello. Did you replicate the experiment, or only once you did? Actually, sir, we did it for uh, four four times, sir. Uh, we got uh, error in uh, two two tests for two bacteria. We we have error, uh, so we did it. I'm not talking about bacteria. We will do first part. First part is three plants, three solvents. Miguel. Yes, sir. Three plants, three solvents. we ka, we did it for uh, sir four times we did sir okay so four times we extracted can you do a two way anova of that okay sir i will uh, do that uh, two way anova test and i would uh, check with the results uh, with you sir yeah sure you can do it two way anova for that very simple right 
tell you the results yeah tell me the results i will come in i will give you a comment okay okay sir. Good afternoon, sir. I'm G. Vijay Lakshmi. Uh -huh. Yeah. Where? Hello, sir. Yeah, I can hear. Sir. Sir, could you hear me, sir? I can hear you. Sir, uh, how the T and uh, F tables, the values are assigned, sir? The tabulated values assigned in the T table and F table. Uh, okay. So what they do is, sir. Uh, um, the value that is given inside is the probability value right so for example if you take a normal distribution you know the equation of the normal distribution e minus x minus mu square divided by sigma square right yes, so for given yes, mu and sigma um, for different x values we can plot that graph that is how software do they plot the graph and then for each of the x value it will calculate the area under the curve which is the probability the softwares can do that you understood no so, so the no normal distribution and the t t test is uh, is there any relations to ah you yeah, yeah, there is um, normal distribution is when your data points are very very large your t distribution becomes a normal distribution so normal distribution is like a bell shaped curve right whereas t distribution is, is also symmetric but it falls down very fast you no know, it comes down very fast because you have less number of data you have less number of data um, so uh, it is symmetric but it falls down very fast so if you have more data more data t will become like a normal distribution sir so it is up, if it is, whether it is applicable for uh, more than two samples or uh, two test t distribution sir the t and the f test whether it is applicable for more than two um, samples uh, mean samples applicable but um, if you see, have you seen the table the day the p uh, value the probability the value will be very 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 high okay so suppose if, I, if the degrees of freedom is less the uh, very uh, error is very large the degrees of freedom is more error will come down so it depends if you have two data points degrees of freedom will be only one right yes sir so uh, the error will be very very high your t value should be more than 30 or 40 then only it will uh, consider as different that is if you have only two degrees of freedom but if you have many degrees of freedom like 20 or 25 then even t of 2.9 means uh, that there is a significant difference you understand so uh, the t value if, um, if the uh, degrees of freedom is less your variation becomes very large basically its uncertainty is more if you have less degrees of freedom it's a uh, okay Understood, no? Yes, so sir. You should have more degrees of freedom to reduce the uncertainty. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, one final question, sir. Ah, sure. Sir, one final question from my side. Uh, there is a relation is there any relation between weibull function and uh, uh, gamma gamma distribution uh, weibull distribution and gamma distribution um, actually when i when i saw that gamma function in that uh, weibull distribution uh, i was a little bit uh, thinking whether is there any uh, relationship is going on between them uh, there is no there is no relationship there is no relationship okay sir. gamma function that is separate gamma distribution is separate gamma function is different don't uh, right. mix up okay okay huh? okay okay, okay. okay. Thank you. actually in the reliability test function uh, you have said uh, qt and qt equal to ft equal to 1 minus e power t by eta power beta ah. yeah. is that right, right. Uh, the reliability test function is just e power minus t by eta power beta yes, yes. Uh, for for cal for calculating the unknown values we use uh, unknown beta and eta we use uh, these formulas right. but actually uh, i don't 
uh, I I think there is no problems related with the calculation of uh, beta and eta. No, no, there is no. I, I it will take long time for you. If I give problems, it may take much much longer. That is why I did not give any problem. Yes, correct. But in real life, you can do. Suppose uh, I am given twenty light bulb bulbs. I find out the light. I uh, see how long each bulb uh, will last. One will last for hundred hours. One may last two hundred hours, three hundred hours. And then I can find out the uh, this uh, constant from that data. So I, ideally, uh, we can do it if you are doing it in the lab. Okay. That is the finding out reliability of light bulbs. Finding out reliability. of your screens of your material anything no i have a rod i am bending it and how long it will last how many cycles i can bend it for so that sort of thing we can do so if you are doing any experiments like that in your lab it's very very useful to do that sort of uh, okay thank you sir and uh, and a small silly doubt sir at the in the t table uh, we have values uh, the freedom the, sorry no sir uh, degrees of freedom was given Until tau thousand, ah. actually t test is for values less than thirty. Uh, if we can no, no, use no. for uh, values greater than thirty, we can use or ah. for the number of samples. If it is okay, I, uh, can you hear me? Actually, um, it is not. It stops at thirty. You it can go beyond also. But the, as I said, no. The if you look at ninety five percent column. It will keep on decreasing. It becomes smaller, smaller, smaller. Comes to 1.96. Then it will become very. The difference won't be much. 31 will be 1.960, 1.9599, like that. You know, it's like exponential. It comes out and flattening. So there will still be some difference, but it will be in the second decimal, third decimal, fourth decimal, like that. So if you are doing calculation, then we can stop there actually. So it is not that uh, uh, you you will stop at 30. Because 31 also will have a value, 32 also will be there, 33 also will be there. But the change yes, will. But the change is minimum. Ignore that actually. Okay. That is what we do actually. So 30 sometimes as a as a scientist uh, you may stop at six or seven because you see uh, I I want you to you people to go and see the key table and um, as you keep looking at the degrees of freedom. Uh, it goes down, down, down. At around seven, eight itself, it will become two point five, two point four five, two point four four. Like that, it gives. It reduces little, 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 little. So that is why everybody stops around seven, six, seven degrees of freedom. They don't go up to thirty. Doing thirty experiments is tough, right? It's a lot of work. So six, seven. Like uh, uh, one of one of the person said, he did extraction. He did only four times. If he has to do thirty times, it's a lot of work. He'll be doing for four, five months. Actually. So six, seven degrees of freedom is good enough, generally. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And actually, okay. we uh, uh, it is a, a small doubt, sir. Uh, we would calculate the F test, T test, and uh, all distribution. Uh, the table, actually, the table test. Uh, we would uh, use uh, normal distribution as a base, sir. Uh, for uh, T distribution is different from normal. T distribution is approximation of normal. So. If you look at normal distribution and t distribution, there is a difference in the graph. Okay, um, only the z z distribution when we do that is almost like a t uh, normal distribution. So t distribution is approximation of normal distribution. Only actually, the uh, critical. Uh, yeah. But actually, if uh, z tends to critical value, we will uh, we would use uh, uh, for calculating level of significance, we would use a normal function, right, sir? Uh, we would use yeah, normal distribution yeah. for ca calculating the alpha value yeah yeah for z distribution that is a normal distribution yes correct but t distribution is more like approximation of normal distribution okay so that difference is there actually between t and normal distribution okay normal is very ideal condition where mean mode median are same but in t distribution mean mode median will not be same it will be like it will be like a sharp curve like that you know Whereas normal distribution will be like this. T distribution will be if you plot it, no, it will go like this, like a mountain peak. But when you make have more data, more data, then T will become like a normal distribution, like that. It will become like a bell shaped curve. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you for your uh, kind answering for our questions, sir. Okay. 
and uh, i will hand it over my friends is there any questions i would ask Okay, then. If there are no questions, sir. Uh... Questions, sir. Thank okay, you, sir. Good luck to all of you in your exam. Uh, good luck in your Thank BTEC. You, good luck in your BTEC also. Okay, if you have yes, any doubts, you can write to me. Um, if you have, if you are doing any project, um, you can do the analysis and send me the results. I can comment on it. I will say yes, good. It looks good. Or you can do some changes. I can suggest. Okay. All the best.